Hi, Mila. How are you? Can we chat for a minute? Oh, hey, Isla. Of course we can talk. Is everything all right? Yes, everything's fine. I actually wanted to discuss something about your brother-in-law, Levi. Do you mind? Your son, Levi? Sure thing. What's on your mind? Well, it's a bit difficult for me to say, but I need to ask you a favor. Absolutely, go ahead. What do you need? As a mother, I try not to show any favoritism, but I'm concerned about Levi. He's not contributing much at home. He's an adult now and still unemployed. I'm not sure how to reach him anymore. It's painful to see him drift away from the family. He's turning more and more into the black sheep of the family. Don't you think? I wouldn't label him as the black sheep, but it does sound like he needs to find his way. He's not going to be young forever, and it's important for him to stand on his own feet. I get where you're coming from. Exactly. But he's so resistant to any advice we offer. I'm at a loss. Sometimes it feels like I might have to give up on him and let him go. Give up on him? Let him go? Do you mean kicking him out of the house? Yes, that's what I'm considering. I want to get him out. However, I'm scared that he will retaliate or make a big scene out of it if I do kick him out. What will the neighbors think if he causes a scene on the lawn? Everyone would be able to see it. You know my daughter just got engaged, right? Yes, I heard about that. But causing a scene is not really Levi's style, is it? I remember when he interacted with my son, he was quite considerate and kind. <laughs> Levi got him snacks and even got him that new toy that's been all over the internet lately. So, all I can say is that he seems like a really nice man. He's nice to others, but he refuses to listen to me. Dealing with his behavior has been stressful for years. Mm, I'm sorry to hear that. Honestly, I'm so embarrassed by Levi's situation that I haven't even told my daughter's fiancé about him. I can't bring myself to do it. In fact, I don't have any intentions on telling my future son-in-law that my actual son is a deadbeat. So, are you planning to just ignore Levi's existence? You might not like what I'm saying, but sometimes I wish he could just disappear. You know, be less of a burden on my mind. I think you might be a bit harsh on him. Have you tried having an open conversation with him about how you feel? By the way, I used to work in public relations, so I might be able to help him find a job. That's great, Mila. Your connections could be really valuable. Well, I still have a few contacts. Let me see where I put them. Before you reach out to them, I thought it might be better for Levi to stay with you and Carter for a while. Wait, what? You want Levi to come live with us? Yes, you guys have that spacious three-bedroom apartment, right? It wouldn't be an issue for him to stay there. My son has his own room and Carter and I have the master bedroom. The third room is smaller, more like an office in a library. We would have to do a lot of shuffling and moving if Levi were to stay with us. It would take a lot of rearranging, and I'm not sure if it's suitable for Levi in the long run. I think it'll work out. Carter looks up to his older brother, and I believe they'll get along. Having another adult around might be good for your son, too. He will have another adult around to look after him. I need to discuss this with Carter first. I can't make this decision on my own. I'll get back to you once I've talked with Carter and my son about it. The three of us will have a say in this. Of course I want to talk with Levi about this as well. I'm pretty confident Carter will agree. It's a good opportunity for them to bond. But really, Levi will go anywhere if there's room. You know what? I even bet he won't even leave that room. Lord knows he hasn't left his room in a long time. Once you decide, I'll be more than willing to help you set up that office as a bedroom. Isla, hold on. <laughs> Isla, you're jumping ahead. This is a big decision. We haven't agreed to anything yet. Just keep in mind that saying no might affect my daughter's engagement. Are you prepared for that responsibility? I doubt Levi's living situation will have such a significant impact on someone else's future. It's already settled that my daughter and her fiancé will be staying with us. Ideally, Levi should be the one supporting his parents as we age, but the reality is the opposite. But as you can see, we are the ones that are still taking care of him. It's embarrassing. He's not contributing to our family. I see your perspective. Actually, I also really want our whole family to be able to live together under one roof. Wouldn't it be great if you and Carter moved here with my daughter's family and Levi? 
Even though Levi is a useless kid, at least Grace can give me money monthly, and you can help me with the housework. I'd be happy if you and Carter moved in with us. But I'm guessing that's not in your plans, right? It's not about that, but Carter and I decided to have our own place and not live with our parents. You are my son's wife, which means you have a duty to take care of us. And since you can't give me money or help me with the housework, you should at least know to accept responsibility for taking care of Levi, right? Well, then this might be the solution. It's nearly decided. I hope you understand where I'm coming from. I don't think that makes sense. Then there is nothing else you can say. You don't want to take care of us. The least you can do for us is take Levi in. So I think it's pretty much been decided. You have no grounds to refuse my request. Hey Mila, just wanted to catch up. How's life with Levi? Have you all settled into the arrangement? Hi Isla. Yeah, things are going surprisingly well. We adjusted faster than I expected. My son actually enjoys having his uncle around. Well, that's a bonus. Uncle Levi as a babysitter, huh? Yeah, he helps out quite a bit. How do you manage the living situation? I heard that you shuffled your rooms around. I heard that you moved your son into the bedroom you called an office? Yeah, that's right. We did some rearranging. The office seemed too small for a grown man and my son's now in kindergarten. The old office is a good size for him now, so I switched the rooms around. So it made sense to change things up. Sorry for the inconvenience. Thanks for accommodating my deadbeat son. But you don't have to do that, do you? For such a parasite, just having a place to sleep is good enough for him. It's not as bad as he put it, really. He's actually been quite helpful. Oh, is that all? No complaints? Levi is being genuinely useful? Are you... stupid? <laughs> no exaggeration. He's been a real asset. Not just a counter to my previous remarks, I hope. No, really. He pitches in with household chores, and he's great with my son. We share similar interests, too, so it's been enjoyable. Interests? You mean his obsession with childish things like games and cartoons? You're into that stuff, too. <laughs> games and, as you put it, cartoons aren't just for children anymore. They're popular across all age groups, including ours. We have fun talking about it and recommending shows to each other. Interesting. I didn't peg you for the quirky type. Thought you were more practical and normal. Hobbies, huh? Changes how I see you. Anyway, things are smooth. Everyone's getting along. No need to worry. Glad to hear it. You quirky bunch under one roof. And I've got newfound freedom without Levi. Like there's nothing that I need to hide. All he had to do was leave to make this house so much brighter. Like a weight's been lifted. I understand. He became a shut-in after quitting college. It worried me, but he'd never leave his room. Missed family dinners, hardly saw him. I spun stories to neighbors that he'd moved for work. It was tough. That must have been hard. I get why you feel relieved with him gone. I admit, his moving in was a surprise, but it's working out. So, do you really think that's true? Or are you just saying it to keep things pleasant? I genuinely mean it. You're really fine living with that recluse? Doesn't it disgust you? I mean, you're sharing your living space with him, including a bathroom. In the beginning, there were a few bumps here and there. It was an adjustment. But we've all tried to make it work. There's more to him than what you see. A grown man like him? Are you being honest? We've all compromised. Initial hiccups were expected. Can't believe you're okay with having a stranger walking around your house. You're quite the odd one. I'll never understand you. You do remember that it was you who pushed all this onto us, right? He's not a total stranger and we talked it over. Carter and I talked this over and over until we reached common ground, so I don't think it's appropriate for you to say that to me. Remember, you did ask us to help. It's not like I invited a stranger in. Your judgment is a bit unfair. I'm stating my outside view. If it rubs you wrong, that's on you. Levi never listened to what I said. Out of all my children, my sons are such failures. They're all disappointments. I can only count on my daughter. She's the only good one. 
Hmm, is that so? She plans to support us in old age, so I don't think that we'll be passing on any inheritance to you guys. I wasn't counting on that. And your parents must be miserable. You're their only daughter. They have no one else to turn to if they want to be taken care of. My parents had already planned out their retirement and prepared everything themselves. They never thought of having to rely on me. Of course, if anything were to happen to them, I'll be by their side for sure. Living with your child, being cared for in old age, that's the dream. If your parents are fine without you, that's their call. Thanks for helping Levi. Keep it up, he won't set foot in my house again. Let him know, will you? Appreciate it. It's not easy for you, but please take good care of him. Mila, I just heard something that's left me fuming. Did Levi really splurge on a new TV and washing machine for your family? And you conveniently left that out? What's the matter with you? I could have used new appliances too. Yes, that's true. Levi made that choice on his own. I'm sorry I didn't inform you. He should have had the decency to consult me before making such big purchases. It's basic respect to involve parents in decisions like these. It wasn't as significant as it seems. The TV wasn't even that expensive. It is the money that Levi earns himself. How he wants to spend it is his right. I don't think you have the right to decide. Levi said he did it as a gesture because I let him move in. Even so, a smaller TV would have been a great addition to our bedroom. And did you also acquire new gadgets because Levi moved in? No, we're actually in the process of moving. We've started to declutter and discard items we don't need anymore. You're moving? Yeah, Carter and I always talked about having a house of our own. Recently, we found a suitable piece of land and decided to build a new home. Hold on a second. You're constructing a house on property you bought. How did you suddenly have the money for that? Weren't you a stay-at-home mom after quitting your job? We've been saving for the down payment for a while now. And Levi also contributed. Wait, Levi pitched in? Yeah, he insisted on giving us money to help with the expenses. He said since we're living together, he wanted to contribute. What on earth? How could Levi afford that? <laughs> Maybe you never bothered to know, Isla. Levi's been working. Working? But he hardly ever left the house. Uh, remote work is a thing. He managed to juggle multiple jobs while staying home. Impossible. Why didn't he ever mention this? He claims you never paid attention when he tried to tell you. That can't be true. He couldn't have possibly held a job. His financial contribution shows otherwise. You need to convey this to Levi. If he has money, he should be reimbursing me for all the expenses I bore while raising him. I provided for him during his reclusive phase. I heard he's already been compensating you. What? Are you serious? I received nothing from him. He's been sending $2,000 to your account each month for the house. And he even stocked food in your place. $2,000? Isn't that the money my daughter's been contributing? No, it's not from your daughter. I think there might be a misunderstanding. I don't believe a word of this. You're inventing stories just to side with Levi, aren't you? <laughs> you don't have to believe me. It doesn't change your situation. There's something deeply wrong with you. Nobody in their right mind would swallow your absurd tales. Don't try to make a fool of me. I won't waste my time listening to your lies. Very well. That suits me fine because this may very well be our last conversation. I'd appreciate that. But remember, you better show up at my daughter's wedding and make sure your gift is generous. Carter's salary may not be sky high, but he works for a reputable company. He could easily get an advance on his paycheck if needed. I'll discuss it with Carter. No need for discussion. We've already decided you're attending the wedding. After that, you're free to do as you please. We can part ways after the wedding. You know what? After the wedding, I won't consider you family anymore. I'll be perfectly content with just my daughter and her husband by my side. Mila, I've been trying to reach Levi. Tell him to pick up my calls. Honestly, I'd rather not. 
What's the matter with you? What's the matter with me? How about you, Isla? Have you conveniently forgotten the promise you made? You swore you'd never bother him again. This isn't about that right now. Just do what I'm telling you and pass on the message to Levi. Tell him to call me back immediately. I have no desire to. Listen, he's my son. He can't just cut me off like this. I brought him into this world. Funny how you're suddenly all concerned about your motherly duties. You know what, Isla? You're reaping what you've sown. He can't say that to me. I'm his mother. No matter what, he should show some respect. Respect? After years of disregard and mistreatment? <laughs> you've got to be kidding me. Your twisted sense of entitlement never ceases to amaze me. Grace told me about the money Levi's been giving me. She said it's all true. He's been supporting me financially. Grace knew this whole time and didn't tell me. How heartless can she be? Ugh, the irony. The queen of deception is shocked by a taste of her own medicine. Levi should have had the decency to tell me himself. And why should he? To endure more of your unending criticism and manipulation? You've broken that boy down for years, Isla. Don't act surprised when he finally breaks free. But why resort to all this? He could have moved out ages ago, lived on his own terms with the money he was sitting on. Levi's not driven by the shallow desires you are. He's content as long as he has a roof over his head. He told me he did consider leaving, but he was waiting for the right time. What? <laughs> yeah, it was a blessing for him when you kicked him out. He saw that as his chance. By now, you should have realized just how much he did for you. He deliberately orchestrated this? He pushed us to this point? He stopped sending money just when we need it for the wedding. We're in a dire situation. The expenses are piling up. We can't survive like this. I thought we had enough, all thanks to Grace. I never imagined it was a lie. I'll give you a moment to bask in the irony of it all. Grace refuses to repay us. Can you fathom that? She's focusing on her future. We're scraping by on our retirement savings. We can't cover everything. Now can you see why I need Levi back? Oh, I see it, Isla. But Levi has cut all ties with you. He won't be coming back. It's time for you to take responsibility for your own mess. No, you're not understanding. I can't reason with you. Just let me speak to Levi. He has to listen to his mother, who's weeping for him. Actually, I've been operating under Levi's instructions this whole time. He's been a lifeline. So when I asked if there's anything he wanted me to convey, he specifically asked me to handle communication with you. What? I'm his spokesperson, Isla. Everything I say is directly from him. You've known this from the beginning, haven't you? You knew about Levi's hidden wealth. That's why you were so comfortable with him moving in. The money was news to me as well, just like it was for Carter. We discovered he was working, and yes, it was shocking at first. But after a heart-to-heart -heart with Levi, we felt compassion. What's so deserving of pity about him? We funded his education, yet he dropped out. We're the ones who deserve pity. You single-handedly dictated his path, forcing him into a college he didn't choose. You barked about any other option being worthless. You pushed him into your mold. He hoped the pressure would ease after getting in, but your haranguing continued daily, guiding him into a career you chose. And when you weren't berating him, you were finding faults in every step he took. I'm his parent. It's my job to ensure his success. You're a failure? You're nothing? Not once did you offer praise. But those words became his constant companions, leading him down a path of depression. He can't blame me for that. He just couldn't handle my guidance. He's incapable of doing anything right. And yet you're depending on him to solve your problems? Isla, who's the one being utterly useless now? How dare you? I don't care who you think you are, but watch your tongue. You're my son's wife. Know your place. Do you even realize the consequences if you keep insulting me like this? Consequences? Carter and I are independent. We don't need anything from you. I'm going to expose what a terrible wife and daughter-in-law you are. I'll let everyone, including the neighbors, know. Is that all? Go right ahead. Relatives and others can form their opinions. 
I'm not concerned about your neighbor's judgment. So go on, spread the news about me. I won't lift a finger when you find yourself in trouble. We never asked for your help. We don't want it now or in the future. Feel free to try. Your opinion and your gossip mean nothing to us. We're not here for your approval. You'll regret crossing me. You'll come crawling back, begging for my mercy. There's no regret here. We're living our lives happily without your toxic influence. Your idea of mercy is manipulation and control. I demand you send Levi back. He's my flesh and blood. He belongs with us, not with you. Your demands hold no weight. You disowned him. You threw him away like he meant nothing. Now you want him back when you're in need? Pathetic. I'll reveal all your dirty secrets. You can't hide from me. Our lives are an open book. We have nothing to hide, and nothing you say will change our reality. You'll pay for this insolence. You'll regret every word you've said to me. We've paid enough already. Years of emotional abuse and neglect. We've had our fill of your regrettable ways. You can't keep us away. We'll be at your doorstep every day. So, you won't believe how things turned out. Isla and my father-in-law actually came to us one day, practically begging and in tears. It was almost comical to see, considering how they'd treated us before. But you know what? We didn't even let them get to our front door. We just told them to leave. They thought they could just waltz back into our lives, but that ship had sailed. And get this, they couldn't even talk to Levi. Turns out, Isla's been having daily showdowns with Grace and her husband. Classic drama, right? Grace's scheme about moving back in with her folks was all about trying to transfer the house into her name. And guess what? She succeeded. But now she's apparently trying to kick her parents out. Crazy, right? Word got around through our relatives about all this chaos. And honestly, I can't say I'm surprised. Isla's brought this all on herself with her behavior. Karma's a real thing, folks. You reap what you sow. Thanks to Levi's financial help, we were able to expand the house beyond what we'd originally planned. Turns out, he can work anywhere as long as he's got his laptop. So he decided to see the world and experience living in a loving environment, which is why he moved in with us back then. The money he contributed was his way of saying thanks for providing him that safe haven. He's off exploring different corners of the globe now, but we stay in touch whenever he's back in the States. His room's always ready for him. This place is his home base. No matter where he goes, he'll always be welcomed here. <laughs>